The holidays can be a great time if you have a family, a functional family that love each other and that want to be with one another. But it can be a terrible time if the family is not functional, if it's a dysfunctional family. Because then you're going to be forced into their company and that can be a cause for a lot of stress. Life needs to be a celebration each and every day. Not just when, when it get, becomes winter and when somebody decides that this is the time for you to celebrate. Imagine the joy of somebody walking into your house with a freshly prepared cake and it's no special day. It's just another ordinary day. But the fact that you took a trouble to make a cake, to bake that beautiful cake and put the icing on it and bring it to somebody's home, makes that day a celebration. These celebrations are really forced on us by the whole consumer goods industry. They want you to buy gifts. They want you to buy, you know, items that you don't really require. And if you go into the stores now for a change after uh, COVID, the, the shelves are fully stocked. Hundreds and hundreds of games. I went to buy a gift for a friend and I was just baffled by the choices. Why does one need so much? At the end of life, you know, when you're finished with everything, you leave it all behind and then your kids struggle to throw it out. They really struggle because these things have meant so much to you in your life and it's going straight into the garbage. Just remember that. Don't spend the rest of these vacations planning what to buy. If you went with nothing, they must still love you. We teach our children to value people based on the kind of gifts that they bring. And little kids clearly ask you, he didn't bring anything for me. And I'm like, no, I didn't bring anything. And whenever I do take something, I try not to make this a drain on my, on, on my finances. I do what's within my capacity, not what's expected of me. We all have everything we need. But what we long for and want is the warmth and the hugs and the cheer and the happiness of the holidays. Isn't that right? It's all about that. It's about the food that we cook, the, the people that we invite, the laughter that we share. Everything is just a celebration. Why can't we make every day a celebration? Isn't it? Why do we reserve it only for these two weeks in the year? Uh, for one, those two weeks, a lot of people get time off. And that is a definite blessing. We work and we work and we work. And in those two weeks, we celebrate, we party, we, we, you know, drink and eat. And then on the first of the year, everyone's on a diet. Everyone's giving up drinking for a month. You know, doing all these things. How do you want to celebrate? How do you want to celebrate? Must we celebrate the way 
we have always done. Maybe can we make a change this year? Instead of buying one gift for everybody, buy one gift for the whole family and let each person get one gift. You know, that secret Santa thing that everyone does. That's enough. That's enough. It's the joy of opening something. We have everything we need. Everything extra is just a burden. One more candle, one more cup of uh, teacup, one more uh, thing that we don't really need in our homes. Half the time it goes directly from the from some you know whoever gives it to you into the garbage or donated. Because you don't want to fill your house with things that you have to dust and clean. There's enough stuff already. The world is filled with stuff. It's all going into landfills. Value the things that really make the celebration. Value the things that really make the celebration. People, food, laughter, conversations, connections, reaching out to people that you haven't reached out to before, meeting new people, traveling, listening to music, going to concerts. This is the celebration. And this is the celebration that you need to have through the year. Why is it that people get depressed? Why is it that people get unhappy? Because it's a it's a definite reminder of what you don't have. You go to the shop windows and you see all these beautiful dresses and brand new gadgets and phones and things like that. And you say, I want that. And when you can't afford it, when no one gives it to you or nobody gives it to you, then you're sad. Then you're sad. We all have our limits, right? For someone, getting a stuffed animal is a, is a wonderful thing. For someone else, a Gucci bag for $5,000 is what they want. Which category are you going to plug yourself into? There's always going to be something more. If you start buying into gifts and to things, it's always going to increase and let me tell you the depression of the holidays, the stress of the holidays is because of this. As you approach your vacation time, you know you're going to be eating a lot. You're going to be with family. There's going to be lots of food. There's going to be lots of desserts and it's very hard to say no. Start fasting two weeks prior to your vacation. Get into shape, lose three, four, five, six pounds. So then when you put that on, it's fine. And straight after vacations are over, go back into fasting mode. You know, this has been the easiest I have ever been able to lose weight. Whenever I, when I went to India, I, I was unable to, to say no. Because people get really offended if you don't eat. And if you've ever been to India, and you know what I'm talking about, if you go to someone's house and say, I'm fasting, sorry, I can't eat, they get most offended. It's like a big insult. So I was having two meals a day, not three, whenever I could manage it. Two meals a day, but still, because those meals were so heavy with, you know, a lot of food I did put on seven pounds but in the first week that I came back I went into two 36 hour fasts. 36 hour fasts are easy to do it's eating one day and not eating one day they're the easiest you you have dinner at seven o'clock and then you skip a whole day and then you have breakfast the next day but it actually is 36 hours it's a long time but it, it feels like just one day so it's really doable and just doing two of those fasts, I dropped five pounds. 
it is the easiest that it has ever been for me to lose the weight. Why do you put on weight during holidays? It's really not the food because it's hard for, for you to put on seven pounds in four days. It takes a while. What happens is when you eat, your body retains fluid. So what you lose is a lot of fluid after the holidays go because that's what happens. That's how insulin works. It needs water. So your body keeps a lot of the fluid. And so it's easy. Prepare yourself for the holidays. Don't eat till the last day and then feel upset and angry with yourself that you've put on the weight. Enjoy with your family. Eat with them. Have desserts. A little bit. Not too much. But prepare in advance. Go into doable fasts. 16 hours, 18 hours, 24, 36, whatever you can manage. Once you get into the habit of fasting, the holidays can be great. Because you know that once it's over, you've put on a few pounds, but it can come right off. And there's nothing to worry about. What is more important is to be happy when you're with your family. To be relaxed, to be comfortable and not worried that I'm going to be eating too much, I haven't bought the right gifts, I didn't receive the right gifts. No, 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 no. That is no way to spend your vacation. What I prefer to having just two weeks of vacation is a lifetime of celebration. When you live each moment thoughtfully, careful what you put into your mouth, careful what words come out of your mouth, careful what you purchase for yourself, able to distinguish between what you need and what you want. Life becomes a joy. It becomes a celebration. Why do we meditate? We meditate so that we live our lives as being one of choice. That everything you do, you do deliberately. Not out of conditioning. Not because it's been. that's the way it's been done. This is, this, is, this is the ultimate aim that life then becomes an effortless exercise, not an imposition put on you, not something that you have to go through. And usually when the high is too high, then the low is quite low. There is a crash after that. But if you think of every day being a celebration, then it's all the, at the same level. There's no spike, so there's no crash. You treat the holidays like one more day because you are locked in the now, in the eternal time, where every day is a celebration. You're always, always happy.